Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Tina Turner moments. For this list, we're looking at times throughout this queen of rock and roll's career that proved why she was simply the best. What's your favorite Tina Turner memory? Share it with us in the comments. Number 10. From backing vocalist to lead singer. In his autobiography, Ike Turner recalled heading to the studio to record A Fool in Love, which he'd written for singer Art Lasseter. However, Lasseter was a no-show. So, one of the backing singers, Anna Mae Bullock, or Little Anne, offered to step up instead. Initially, Turner only planned on using Bullock's vocals as a placeholder until Lasseter returned. However, the demo reached the president of the R&B label Sue Records, who was so impressed by what he heard that he gave Turner a $20,000 advance. When I recorded the song A Fool in Love, I took it to New York, Juggy Mary of Sue Records. He said, why don't you keep it with the girl's voice? I like it. Ike then gave the young vocalist a new stage name, Tina Turner. A Fool in Love became a hit, soaring straight to number two on the hot R&B sides chart. Got me laughing when my heart is in pain. Oh, now I must be a fool. Number nine, shining a spotlight on Nutbush, Tennessee. Anna Mae Bullock grew up in the unincorporated rural community of Nutbush in Haywood County, Tennessee. In 1973, she and Ike took us on a musical tour of the neighborhood with their hit Nutbush City Limits. And they really sell it, don't you think? A church house, gin house, school house, outhouse, old highway number 19. The people keep the city clean. The song charted worldwide, even peaking at number one in Austria, and became a certified silver track in the UK. It even inspired a line dancing trend that's still popular in Australia. 4,084 punters boot scooted their way to the record books, performing the largest city limits dance routine, some more coordinated than others. It was one of the final songs the duo recorded together, and Turner would re record the number numerous times as a solo artist. Needless to say, her voice put Nutbush on the map. Now, those are some powerful vocals. Number 8. Speaking out about her relationship to help others After leaving Ike in 1978, Tina opened up about the violence she had experienced in their relationship. I didn't exist, but I survived it. And when I walked out, I walked, and I didn't look back. The singer was praised for breaking the silence on such a serious issue. She first opened up about her experiences during an interview with People magazine in 1981, becoming one of the first big names to address the previously taboo subject. At that moment, Tina became a voice and a beacon of hope for women everywhere who were enduring similar situations. My life with Ike was uh, one that a lot of maybe people are familiar with, the husbands that that is uh, uh, that uh, practice brutality. <laughs> She's often credited with giving others the courage to speak up too. The worst parts of your life has been an inspiration. We have 50,000 letters downstairs from women who have also been through it and survived. Tina did it, so can you. Let's celebrate. This is reflected through the many tributes that poured in after her passing in May 2023. Number seven, recording private dancer in just two weeks. We've all been there. You have an insanely tight deadline and you simply cannot imagine how you will ever meet it. You keep your mind on the money, keeping your eyes on the wall. What if we told you that Tina Turner recorded an entire album in a fortnight? What's love got to do? It's got to do it. I knocked that album out in two weeks in the studio. Done. Finished. As the story goes, her label, Capital, was keen to jump on the success of her previous hit, Let's Stay Together, and asked her to assemble the album under tight time constraints. <laughs> Well, she did, and it became one of her most successful albums. It was a worldwide hit, earning her multi-platinum certifications and four Grammy Awards. Just think about that next time the pressures of a quick turnaround start to get to you. We know we will.
Number 6. A Big Screen Icon We all know Tina Turner is a music icon, but did you know that she tried her hand at acting too? And she was good! Fans of The Who's Tommy might remember her powerful performance as the Acid Queen. I'll show him what he could be now. Just give me one night. She also had a small role in Last Action Hero in 1993. However, perhaps her most notable role was as Auntie Entity in 1985's Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. You might also be familiar with the song playing over the film's credits, We Don't Need Another Hero, proving that Turner was a triple threat and a force to be reckoned with. We don't need another hero. She also sang the title song for the 1995 James Bond movie Goldeneye. Goldeneye, do what I please. Goldeneye, no time for sweetness. Now that is one impressive resume. Number 5. A Next Level Grammys Performance Few artists can simply take to the stage without glitz, glamour, or theatrics and rely on their voices to make their performance soar. What's up? But in 1985, anyone watching the Grammy Awards witnessed magic in the making. Turner's powerhouse vocals and effortless charisma made this performance of What's Love Got To Do With It one for the ages. Then Grammy's executive producer Ken Ehrlich recalled planning the iconic moment. He suggested they go minimal and have Turner perform on stage solo since, quote, if Tina Turner couldn't hold her own on stage, who could? Touche. <laughs> the audience's standing ovation was more than deserved, as was the Best Pop Vocal Award she took home that night. Number 4. The First Black Female Artist on the Cover of Rolling Stone On November 25, 1967, Rolling Stone put Tina Turner on the cover of their magazine. This was a significant moment for music, culture, and women, particularly women of color. Not only was Turner the first woman to grace the magazine's cover, but she was the first black artist ever to be given this honor. The magazine described her as, quote, an incredible chick, and told their readers, quote, Tina Turner is worth sitting down and paying close attention to. You're simply the best. Better than all the rest. Needless to say, they could not have been more spot on. Of course, Turner would continue to break the mold throughout her career, but more on that soon. Number 3. The Queen of the Comebacks After leaving Ike, Tina rebranded as a solo artist. And so, in the 1980s, she ushered in one of the greatest comebacks in music history. My private dancer album, no, I don't consider it a comeback album. Tina had never arrived. It was Tina's debut for the first time, and this was my first album. We already talked about her commercially successful album Private Dancer and her Grammy Award-winning What's Love Got To Do With It. But would you believe that aged 44, she finally achieved her one and only Billboard Hot 100 number one with the famous track? At 44, Tina released her biggest solo hit, and her career skyrocketed, selling more than 200 million records. Now that's how you make a comeback. And it's proof that there's no real timeline for achieving one's goals or hitting milestones. Turner's success only continued after that, and of course, she is still up there among the best-selling recording artists. But a sweet old-fashioned notion, what's love got to do, got to do with it. Number 2. Breaking Two Guinness World Records The 80s really were a high point for the icon who, as we just stated, made the comeback of all comebacks. In 1988, she embarked on her Break Every Rule world tour, 
180,000 people came to watch her at Rio de Janeiro's Maracanã Stadium, thus breaking the then-record previously set by Frank Sinatra for the largest paying audience for a solo performer. Got to arenas, we eventually fulfilled her dream and filled the stadiums. That concert in Rio, there's 186,000 people there. Then, in 1990, Turner set out on her Europe-only foreign affair, The Farewell Tour. The tour drew in roughly 3 million spectators across the continent, once again breaking a record, this time previously set by the Rolling Stones. Just a memory to keep We can't think of many artists more deserving to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Twice. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Cose della Vita with Eros Ramazzati. If only these two released a whole album. Heavenly. Recording the Grammy Hall of Fame admitted River Deep Mountain High. The title also describes just how much we love this tune. That iconic Eiffel Tower photo. Only a true queen could pull off such an epic shot with no Photoshop. That's right, folks, she really did that, high heels and all. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Rolling on the River and Into Our Hearts Originally a Creedence Clearwater Revival track, it's fair to say that most people would associate Proud Mary with Tina Turner. Her version, recorded with Ike in 1971, added a level of funk that still makes us leap out of our seats whenever we hear it. It became her signature track and a quintessential part of her live performances. We could easily create a list of her best Proud Mary performances, with the live Wembley and her 1997 SNL renditions vying for the top spot. The best, initially written by Bonnie Tyler, is another example of how Turner's unrivaled vocals and style elevate covers into iconic status. To put it plainly, she was simply the best. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.